Okay, hi. So in the last video, we spoke um, about power stations and non-renewable energy mostly. In this video, we're going to talk about the ways in which we can use renewable sources of energy in order to be more sustainable. And so we're going to start off looking at wind and water. So firstly, wind power wind power. Now I'm sure you've all seen a wind turbine. It looks something like this. So a great drawing here. You basically you have these propellers where the wind, which is going to be coming different color from this direction, say. So this is the wind. And the wind is going to cause these propellers to turn. So they're going to spin round, spin round, spin round. And like we saw in the previous video, when you have a turbine that's spinning, that in turn can cause a generator to spin and then, of course, produce electricity. Now, of course, the amount of electricity or the power produced, because remember, power is uh, energy in a given amount of time. So the power is dependent. So it depends on the strength of the wind. So that sort of seems quite obvious because if you had a, a really calm day where no wind was really blowing about at all, you wouldn't really produce a lot of power. So this really does depend on the strength of the wind. Whereas if you had really fast winds, then this is going to spin really fast, spin the generator really fast, and you're going to get a lot of energy produced. Now we're going to go more in depth on the positives and negatives of these types of energy in another video. So that would do now for wind power. Okay, and so next we're going to take a look at wave power. Right, now wave power obviously uses waves uh, in the ocean in order to generate electricity. And what we have is what is known as a wave generator. Generator. Now this is not a machine which is going to generate waves. It is a generator which is using the energy from waves in order to convert it into electricity. And so these wave generators might look something like this. We've got the waves coming in this direction. So this is in the ocean. And basically what's happening here is you have this tube and this is anchored to the seabed. So this is this will be anchored to the seabed. And it's also got wires um, going to the shore. So wires going to the shore. What's going to happen is the energy from the waves is going to be converted into electricity by the generator. So the generator is going to move as a result of these waves moving it up and down. And this movement causes the generator um, to spin and obviously produce electricity. That will then be sent via um, the wires back to the shore to a grid where the electricity can be properly collected. Okay, there are variations on how these wave generators work, but it's all the same thing if you look at the core of it. It's the movement of waves being converted into electrical energy via a generator. Okay, so then we, we then move on to hydroelectric power. Now, hydroelectric power involves storing water. So, storing water. And this will be in a reservoir or a dam or whatever. And basically, what's going to happen is you're going to store water and then allow it to flow downhill. So, for example, if we have this here, we've got the reservoir at the top. Okay, so this is our reservoir of water. And you see we have a dam here. So this is a dam. And this is stopping the water from naturally flowing. And so we allow water to flow down here. But we couple that with uh, turbines. And so this turns the turbines, and those turbines are then, of course, coupled to generators, which can produce electricity. So the movement of water causes the turbines to spin. Those turn the generators, and then the generator will produce electricity for us. And so this is good because this is natural. This is gravity that's allowing this water to move. And so this happens over and over and over and over again, and it means we've got a constant supply of electricity. Okay, now slightly similar to this, finally we have tidal power. Now tidal power, exactly as it sounds, uses energy from the tide. Okay, so if this is the ocean, what we might have is the tide coming in. So the tide is obviously coming in this way. And we have this which is known as a barrage. So the barrage here. And this is designed to trap water. So it lets the water in but doesn't let it back out.
tide comes in and eventually you'll have the tide, let's say, over here. So we get rid of that rubbish, like so. And then when the tide comes back out, we'll have water here, but we've still got all this water trapped behind the barrage. So what we do is we let the water back out to sea, but we let it out through turbines. So obviously a very common theme, and these turbines are going to turn and couple to a generator produce electricity. So rather than let the tide come in and go out straight away, we let the tide come in and then as it's going out, we trap the water, then let it out through turbines instead. And this allows um, the movement of these turbines and production of electricity. Okay, so that's about it for wind and water in order to produce energy. Now we're going to take a quick look at how we use the sun and of course the earth. Okay, so using the sun for energy is of course known as obtaining solar power. Solar power, but this is not just one method. A lot of people think that solar power just means using solar panels on your roof, but that's not the only way that we can do it. So we have what is known as a solar cell, and that might look something like this. And that solar cell is doing exactly what you might think. It's taking the energy from the sun and converting that into electrical energy. Now we join these solar cells together in order to create a solar panel. And the reason being is that a solar cell itself is not very efficient, so we need a lot of them in order to produce a decent amount of energy. So multiple solar cells creates a solar panel. Okay. What we can also do to avoid converting it into electricity and, and losing a lot of that energy because it's not very efficient is use what is known as a solar heating panel. Now a solar heating panel will directly heat water. So this is a solar heating panel. Now this that I've drawn in the middle of it, um, it should really be going fully out and fully into the panel like so and like so. Water will be going into here, cold water. Okay, so cold water in, and then the rays of the sun are going to heat up that water, and then we'll get water coming out this way, which will be hot. So hot water out, and this is cold water in. This is great because it means that we can avoid using a boiler, which costs a lot of money. Um, we can avoid using electricity in order to heat the water. We can just use the sun directly. And that's more efficient than converting solar energy into electricity via a solar panel. Now, one last way we can use solar energy, which is actually quite an advanced uh, piece of technology, is known as a solar power tower. Tower. Now, what you'll have in the tower are loads of mirrors so you've got many mirrors, awful handwriting here. Okay, and what they're going to do is they're going to reflect all the light at this water tank. So this is a water tank, and that is found at the top of the tower. Okay, and so light is going to be reflected upwards. So it doesn't matter where the light's going to be hitting, because you've got so many mirrors, it's going to reflect it and reflect it upwards. Okay, the water is eventually turned into steam, and that steam is then allowed to pass through pipes down to the bottom of the tower, and you will have turbines on each side of the tower, or wherever at the bottom of the tower. So you have turbines, and the steam is, let's say, this is just a very simplistic diagram, but let's say it looks like this. As that turns to steam, the steam is piped down and that can turn these turbines. Turbines, of course, couple to a generator and that um, allows electricity to be produced. Okay, this is a very clever method and it can actually produce a hell of a lot of electricity uh, depending on where these towers are placed. Okay, so the last, um, the last method I want to look at is geothermal. So we use geothermal energy in order to produce electricity. The way this works is we use naturally occurring radioactive processes which are happening deep inside the earth. So we don't have to set up any processes ourselves, like in a power plant. We use processes which are already occurring. We of course still need a power plant, 
but it's not burning fossil fuels. So let's say we've got this power plant here. And what we have here is this is the floor and down here deep within the earth, it's actually very hot and there's all sorts of radioactive processes going on. What we have is we have dug down into this part of the earth. And what we put in is cold water. So cold water, we put down this pipe and that will reach obviously this really hot part of the inner earth. Now we also obviously dig another, uh, another tube or whatever you want to call it. Okay, and this is to collect what's going to be formed. So here, the cold water, when you heat cold water, it turns into steam. And the steam is going to then flow back up this tube. And of course, what we're going to put up here, well, very common theme now, we're going to have a turbine. And that turbine will be coupled to a generator and that will form our electricity. Now it's important that this geothermal energy cannot, uh, you know, we can't do this anywhere. We have to choose a place where we know that this process underground is going on. A lot of the time it's in volcanic areas because even though there's going to be hot rock under the earth everywhere, sometimes it's way deeper than others. So we want it to be as shallow as possible so we don't have to dig too far in and we don't disturb the, uh, the environment too much. What's pretty cool as well is we can also heat homes like this directly. So if, for example, you had an easy way of getting to hot rocks because they were really close to the Earth's surface, you could just literally have a water supply going into there and then the uh, steam coming up. Even if this is not, you know, boiling, boiling hot, it could be used to heat water so that you don't have to use a boiler. So there are various different applications for geothermal energy as well. Okay, so that was a lot of information in quite a short space of time. So I'm going to stop there. In another video, we're going to go through the pros and cons of a lot of these different um, methods of producing electricity. But this was just to give you an overview of the different types and exactly how they work so if you do have any questions on that please do feel free to send me an email directly using the link below or comment in the box and i'll be sure to get back to you but i look forward to seeing you in the next video